In short, and please, you know, I'm drastically oversimplifying, from the mid-16th to the early 18th century, when it comes to justifying music, we see a shift from cosmology to anthropology. Music is increasingly seen not as a way of enjoying or tuning into the order of the cosmos, but as a human tool that operates like a language, especially a tool of emotional stimulation. And this, of course, is a view we just take for granted today. In the UK, the classic music radio station, Classic FM, I think you have it here in Australia as well, is happy to speak of music as a kind of audible valium. Relax and unwind with smooth and easy classics on Classic FM. This is the kind of phrase you get. I'm sure Australia has its equivalent as well. ABC has Classic FM, does it not? Yeah? yeah? Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Now let's bear in mind, just before going on, that music is here distanced not only from the older medieval God-centered cosmology, but from any God-centered cosmology. What I've called here, I think, a retreat. The retreat of theological God-centered or God-controlled or God-determined cosmology. By the early 1700s, if music theory invokes cosmology, it is Newtonian cosmology, allied to the mathematics of the fast-emerging empirical sciences. And so now there's a huge interest in the sciences of the body. Music's emotional power is more and more seen in terms of its physiological effects on the body, which generate particular emotional responses. Theology so is in retreat at this point, as far as music theory is concerned. You see how it's interesting how all this thought about music was deeply tied up with debates about God and cosmology and creation, all the big issues of modernity. You see them rustling away there amongst musicians. One last thing before we turn to Bach. A major result of these shifts, as you can imagine, was a whole series of splits and antagonisms as people debated the issues. Either ors, instrumental versus vocal music. And vocal music, with its words, was always seen as superior by all theorists of the time. Secular versus sacred, because sacred was the setting of religious texts. And underlying them all, anthropology versus cosmology, the composer as creative and the composer as the servant of nature. Of course, I'm sketching things in extremely broad brushstrokes, but I hope the basic point is clear.